Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Today I want to show you a new data pack that I created. This is Minecraft Earth in Minecraft Java Edition. Minecraft Earth is, my, is Mojang's new augmented reality game where you can build in real life using augmented reality. So here I've recreated it. There's two parts to it, two main parts. There's the overworld map that you can see here and there are build plates. So build plates let you actually build. You can place your build plate wherever you want in the real world and, um, and build on it and then take that with you. So first let me go over the overworld map here. So this creates a map of the area around you. So there's this like pods all biome over here. There's a lava lake down here, some rivers, some grass. And so you can see all that in the terrain as I move around. It'll keep spawning uh, more or more of that terrain around me in that overworld map. If I get close to one of these tappables, everything will disappear and I just have to tap on it a few times, just spam it and it will give me some items. So there's five, one of those stone blocks, one TNT and five redstone. So the, so the, uh, the different kinds of tappables will give you different uh, kinds of blocks. So let's go over one of these grass tappables and I should get some, some more uh, like organic type blocks or maybe dirt or grass. Yeah, so there's some dirt, there's some flower and some, some grass. And so you can see those are actually showing up in my inventory. Let's see if I can go grab, let's see, there's some stone and a wood here. So we, let's get a stone one first, let's see what we get. It's always, it's always fun opening a essentially a loot box. <laughs> so mine cart, water bucket and two redstone lamps. So those are kind of stone or, or ore based blocks and then here is so this will be some like wood based blocks so yeah wooden stairs pressure plates and a door and uh the really cool thing about this is actually just the animation looks super cool <laughs> when you like uh so you have this minecraft earth uh, item renamed dirt as minecraft earth that's how you actually trigger the overworld map there's this build plate one over here it's a gold pressure plate but when i start holding that Minecraft Earth thing. Um, it generates the new map, and as I move around, the new blocks fly in. That looks pretty cool. Um, and yeah, it just figures out what the terrain is around you, and, and it'll, generates, I mean, it'll generate overworld no matter where you are, uh, and generate these tappables as well that are spawned randomly. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the overworld. I'll talk more about how I implemented that later. Um, for now, let's talk about build plates. So build plates, uh, you can place them anywhere you want, you can build on them, and then you can take those with you. So I could put them on water, I could put them, let's just try and find, so let's let's put them right here. So you can see, um, basically it's gonna, when I click, it's gonna overwrite this, some of this grass and stuff. That stuff goes away. Uh, now I have a little redstone clock here showing that uh, the build is preserved. And as I fly far enough away, that'll go away, and all those blocks that it overwrote will come back. Here we can see it, um, if I put it in the water, it is occupying some of the water, but I can fly away and then that water will come right back. So um, now you can build on these build plates and it, everything that you build will be saved. So let me just build a little thing. Can I put grass on here? Yeah, I can. So um, yeah, and then if I when I fly away, that'll go away. And now we can see that the stuff I added is um, is, is all part of the build plates. And what's really cool about this is like, as you're choosing where to play it, place it, it's not locked to a block. And I'll talk about how I implemented this later, but there's actually some really cool technology here. You will notice that as I move, move it around, the grass blocks, sort of the, you know, those little grass leaves, or I don't know, they're grass. Anyway, they're moving their location. And that's because every plant in the game has a little randomized offset. No, let's, get rid of this based on which X Z coordinates it's in. So as, as I move this around different X Z coordinates, those grass get a little different randomized offset. Um, you'll also notice that this redstone clock that I have here, well, right now only the redstone torch is on and the two repeaters are off. And then if I place it and move away, now the redstone torch is off and the two repeaters are off. Uh, let's see if we can get it. Okay. Now it's back on. Uh, Okay, having trouble getting, come on, there we go. So now now the repeaters are both on and the torch is on as well. So it actually does store the state of things like uh, redstone repeaters and redstone torches. And that's not easy to do, especially given that this isn't, these aren't 
wheel blocks. These are falling blocks. And so, okay, let's talk about how I implemented this. So when you when you place the um, build plate down, it needs to store all the blocks that you're overriding because like, yeah, if I, if I place it here, it's overriding some trees and I want to be able to put those back. Those are not actually cloned anywhere. That would be the easy way to implement it, but you would have to set aside some space uh, in your world for the blocks to be cloned to and to be stored at. Instead, what happens is for each block, I actually figure out what block it is, assign it a numerical ID and store it in the scoreboard. And so by doing this, um, it's not only each block that has a different ID, it's also each block state. So a redstone repeater has different block states, how many ticks it has on here, um, whether it's powered or not, which direction it's facing. And so each of those different variants of the redstone repeater has a different block state and each of those has a different numerical ID. So those are all stored in the scoreboard. And so when I um, move away, all of those numerical IDs from whatever was there are restored back to that location. And so these, these um, all the blocks here are not real blocks right now. And you can kind of see like, first of all, they're not aligning to the XYZ grid, right? Which every block has to do. These are called falling blocks. They used to be called falling sand blocks. They're, they're entities. And they are the entities which are used to implement things like gravel and, and sand and, um, concrete sand or whatever it's called. Um, but you can actually assign those any block name and block state that you want, but there's no way to like directly like copy a block, a block with its block state into a falling sand block or a falling block. So I can't just say whatever block is here, copy that into a falling block. You have to test for each individual block and each individual block state. And there's like 12,000 of those. And that's actually what my data pack is doing. It's testing for 12,000 ish different block states and different blocks. And there's an efficient way to do that involving trees and sort of binary searches and stuff like that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it was not easy to implement, let's just say that. And so it's that way I'm actually able to create falling sand blocks, um, or falling blocks, I guess they're called, <laughs> for each individual possible block state. Um, and so, so how the build plate works is actually just really cool. And and it's just no matter what I do to this, it's just gonna it's gonna store store all that data, and that is really cool. Um, so then that's it for for the for the build plates. Um, let's talk about the overworld. Uh, so these are you might have guessed it already. These aren't falling blocks; they are armor stands. <laughs> so if I kind of look at it from underneath, you can start to see the armor stands. There's a big grid of them, each wearing a different block on their head. There's also an armor stand holding a block for the tappable, this grass block tappable. And as I move around, um, new armor stands are spawned, and they they move in. Um, new armor stands are spawned for the tappables as well. Now this animation here where like all the blocks fly in from around me, um, that was actually not intentional. That was an accident. Basically the way the algorithm works is when I need to generate terrain for this overworld map, I send out some armor stands to the different locations around me. They kind of start in the sky and move downwards. And when they hit a terrain block, something like grass or water or dirt, um, then they stop moving, they put that block on their head, and then they fly in over to where I am looking at the map. And so that just happens to get animated pretty smoothly just by Minecraft's interpolation algorithm. And <laughs> so this, this thing where the blocks fly in was just totally unintentional. Um, similarly, armor stands are used, actually, no, this is a falling block. It's a falling block riding an armor stand, and there's a big slime that I actually click when I tap it. Um, when, I, when I punch, it uh, punches that slime block and that's what detects the clicks. And then these are armor stands holding the different blocks. They have a custom name and the custom name visible tag um, for the, the quantity of the block that gets rewarded as part of that tappable reward. So it's a lot of armor stands. and um, <laughs> So this is a little bit more standard fare for my videos, but uh, it's still managed to look really cool. And that was n mostly by accident, but sometimes that's how these things go. So if you want to use this um, data pack for yourself and get a taste of, uh, of Minecraft Earth, there's not a lot of people who have enough experience with Minecraft Earth to try and recreate it like, like this. Uh, basically, you rename a 
piece of dirt to Minecraft Earth, like this, same capitalization. Rename a golden pressure plate to build plate, just like this, same capitalization. And you can highlight that Minecraft Earth block to bring up the overworld and all the tappables. They'll get automatically randomly generated and spawned. And then, uh, and you don't have to be flying around, of course. I'm just, just flying around for demonstration purposes because it makes it a lot easier to get around. You can do this while you're walking around, although it is actually a little bit tricky because <laughs> you can see it kind of gets stuck in the terrain. But uh, if you hold it at the right angle, you can see what tappables are around you and stuff. And then uh, the, yeah, the pressure plate, same thing. It's just, you just hold it and uh, aim wherever you want. Click, just left click to, uh, put the, to put the build there. And then it'll just automatically disappear once you get far enough away and you can put the put the build plate somewhere else. And so this is a build you can take with you. The only thing is it won't store any tile entities. So things like chests um, won't store their inventory. If you actually place this over an existing chest, it won't remember that either because those are not stored as part of those numerical block states, right? That's an NBT thing, tile entities. So be careful a little bit with tile entities because it will overwrite those and it'll, it'll lose all that information. But you can try it out for yourself. And uh, yeah, just download the data pack. <laughs> this one, this data pack ended up being pretty big just because I needed, you know, 12,000 different MC function files for generating each type of falling block for each different block state. I needed 12,000 different MC function files for detecting each different block and 12,000 MC function files for using set block for each different block ID. So there's like 36,000 MC function files <laughs> just for that stuff. And then plus all the other code that actually runs the data pack. So it is, it is, it is quite a large data pack, but uh, yeah, it still works. It's pretty cool. That's about it. Thanks for watching.